What's going on guys? So, are you ever watching one of your favorite movies and you see an actor and you're all like, wait, they were in that? That's what we're talking about today. The forgotten early work of well-known actors in well-known movies. We're very excited to compile these for you and we're calling it, wait, they were in that? That's all we could come up with. Our first one comes to us from the 1977 Best Picture winner, Woody Allen's Annie Hall. Before he was everyone's favorite chaos theorist, Jeff Goldblum was found right here at this super weird 70s party. Yeah, I, I forgot my mantra. Luckily, he found his mantra, which turned out to be his super weird laugh from Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Our next actor finished the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs, kicked Gary Oldman off his plane, and of course fell in love with Anne Heche in Six Days, Seven Nights. We all saw that, right? But did you know that Harrison Ford was in Apocalypse Now? Pick up Colonel Kurtz's path at New Mung Ba. Follow it, learn what you can along the way. When you find the Colonel, infiltrate his team by <clears throat> whatever means available. Some people might call that great acting. What if he just couldn't remember his lines? I mean, that's what I do when I'm stalling. <coughs> <coughs> Let's turn now to Steven Spielberg's acclaimed war movie, Saving Private Ryan. Tom Hanks spent an entire film searching until he found Matt Damon. But audiences found a lot of other people in this movie. I bet you didn't remember that one of his main team members was Vin Diesel. Every time you salute the captain, you make him a target for the Germans. So do us a favor, don't do it. Especially when I'm standing next to him, capiche? Or that the wrong Private Ryan turned out to be Nathan Fillion. You're James Ryan. <laughs> yeah. James Francis Ryan, mild. James Frederick Ryan, Minnesota. But the biggest find in this acclaimed war drama, Brian freaking Cranston as an army man. This one in Omaha Beach. Daniel Ryan. Hey guys, can we please talk Zoe Saldana? She is excellent at playing gorgeous aliens that make me feel kind of weird for thinking they're hot, like Natiri and Gamora, but she was also in Pirates of the Caribbean. Anna Maria. Unfortunately, they never brought her back for any of the sequels. You know, who cares about the Black Pearl? Where's the Black Girl? Too far? Nah, nothing wrong with that. This next one may come as no surprise because he's been in like half of all movies ever, but it's easy to forget that Samuel L. Jackson was in Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas. Yeah, you're always f***ing late. You're late for your own f***ing funeral. That was Samuel L. Jackson's most unexpected death until he was eaten by that shark in Deep Blue Sea. Let's see that just because. We're gonna see you off this When you think about the movie Collateral, you think Jamie Foxx, Tom Cruise, Michael Mann. You know who you don't think about? Rapper turned actor Ice Cube, which is good because he is not in Collateral. But you know who is? Jason Statham. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine, mate. Don't worry about it. I'm thinking of Collateral, Crank, Crossover. I've already written the script. I call it Crank Lateral. Michael Mann. Call me. Anybody. Please call me. You know Back to the Future 2 as the hit sequel that, as it turns out, completely lied to us about the future. Everyone remembers the stars too. Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, and Elijah Wood? Yep. You mean you have to use your hands? That's like a baby's toy. But Michael J. Fox wasn't the only star to share the screen with young Elijah Wood. Black Widow herself, Scarlett Johansson, made her screen debut in the 1994 critically reviewed film, North. It's so great having you here, North. I've always wanted a brother to throw to. Yeah, and now I have two big brothers to look out for me. Here's another major star making his first appearance in a popular comedy. Southpaw's Jake Gyllenhaal. Even though he didn't get a chance to rope any steers, he did get to act opposite Billy Crystal in 1991's Oscar-winning City Slickers. My dad's named Mitch, and he's... he's a submarine commander. Oh, is... Danny. He works for WBLM Radio. The new movie American Ultra just hit theaters, and I hear it's like Jason Bourne and Pineapple Express had a baby. 
Both of its stars, Kristen Stewart and Jesse Eisenberg, have unusual, unexpected stuff in their careers. But Jesse Eisenberg's is really odd. He was in this Dr. Pepper commercial, which I know it's a commercial, not a movie, what we're talking about here, but let's watch it. Kind of like the Deep Blue Sea thing, just because. The oh, no. underwear is gonna have to come off. Oh, take the underwear off. Take the underwear off. Take my underwear off. It's all right. Just... I'm sorry about that. <laughs> all right, that's it. Step aside. Butt naked kid coming through. Come on, make a hole. Butt naked boy. Butt naked boy. American Ultra's Kristen Stewart is probably best known as Bella from Twilight. But long before her turn as Vampire Edward's lover, she worked for an even colder, more mysterious man. Director David Fincher, as Jodie Foster's daughter in the film Panic Room. Mom, get the f out of my house. Get the f out of my house! One of the two guys menacing Kristen Stewart, by the way, was a cornrowed Jared Leto, who won an Oscar alongside co star Matthew McConaughey for Dallas Buyers Club. McConaughey has many distinguished films to his credit, but his most magical role has to be as a member of the California Angels in the tiny Joseph Gordon Levitt vehicle. Angels in the outfield. I felt weightless like somebody had me by the arm, Skip. How'd I do that? Not only did Matthew McConaughey get to star in a beloved children's film, but he was also able to keep his shirtless on film streak alive. Another Best Actor winner is the late great Philip Seymour Hoffman. He left behind a legacy of fantastic performances, ranging from art house films like Capote to his turn as Dusty, a tornado chasing wild man in 1996's Twister. The suck zone. The point, basically, at which the twister sucks you up. Next up, we have two Magnetos, Michael Fassbender and Sir Ian McKellen. Both of them have Oscar nominations and critical acclaim to their name, but they also played minor roles in big budget action movies. Fassbender's film debut was as Stelios, one of Gerard Butler's abtastic soldiers in Zack Snyder's 300. Our arrows will blot out the sun. Then we will fight in the shade. Sir Ian showed a little more modesty, playing the rogue death in Arnold Schwarzenegger's Last Action Hero. He's not on any of my lists, though you are, Daniel. With all due respect to Sir Ian McKellen, that performance still ranks as the second best portrayal of death on screen, behind, of course, Bill and Ted's bogus journey. You have sank my better ship. Excellent! Speaking of death, Let's wrap things up with Charles Bronson's 1974 hit, Death Wish. While the film may be best known for launching four brutally violent sequels, it also launched two careers for actors making their on-screen debut. The first, an uncredited Denzel Washington. Yep, he gets blown away in an alley. And the second, it's him again, Jeff Goldblum, who plays a character credited as Freak number one, launching an entire career of typecasting. <laughs> Look at that. Lovely little Jeff Goldblum bookends. Well, that was a nice time. What actor was in a movie that you were watching and you were like, wait, they were in that? Let us know in the comments section below. Best answer? We're gonna send you a screen up this t-shirt. I wanna thank you for watching. I'm Hal Rudnick. Hit me up on Twitter. Bye bye. What planet was destroyed by the Death Star in Star Wars A New Hope? Uh, uh, Alderaan. Number four, name four of the seven actors to play James Bond in a film. George Lazenby, Sean Connery, Roger Moore, and Pierce Brosnan.